Hi, welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can install PFSense firewall in VirtualBox. As you know, the PFSense is an open source firewall which can be installed pretty much in any environment that you have. Before I begin, I just want to let you know that I have the step by step instruction on my website. So if you wanted to follow that instructions, uh, I'll put the link in the description so you can follow along. So let's begin. So this is a um, topology that we are going to work on. Uh, we have a pfSense firewall in the middle which provide the LAN access to the VMs that are running in the virtual box and uh, the WAN interface which is connected to the internet which is basically means our local area network okay so let's see how we can do that before you proceed further you need to install a virtual box on your operating system so you may click on download here it will take you to the virtual box download page so depending on your operating system you may download the software and install it on your operating system and after that uh, you need to also download the pfsense image you can click here to do that so it will take you to the download page and the architecture you need to choose amd64 and installer it, it should be a dvd image you know the usb memory stick location uh, you may choose the mirror and click on download that will let you download the file once you have this prerequisite completed you can go ahead and initiate the installation of pfsense in virtualbox so let's open up the virtualbox i have this virtualbox um, software opened up as you can see i have few vms on my virtualbox and i'm gonna install pfsense in it for that click on new and you have to name the vm so for example i'll just name it like pfsense firewall 01 and uh, if you like you can change the location uh, i'm gonna keep the same location and uh, you need to also choose um, iso image so if i if you click on that and uh, you may click on other to browse for the image uh, since i already have it i can choose uh, iso image right there and uh, in the type you need you need to choose bsd and in the version you need to choose free bsd 64 bit and then uh, you may click on uh, next next we are going to configure the memory and uh, cpu so one gig should be totally fine uh, but i would recommend to keep two cpu because i used to run pfsense with just single cpu but uh, lately i have observed that in um, virtual box that is installed in windows 11 i am not able to run pfsense with just single cpu i need to have two otherwise i would get into a reboot loop and I will not be able to install the pfSense basically. Next we are going to create a virtual hard disk so choose the storage of your choice I'm gonna keep it maybe 16 itself if you want to keep more storage you may do that and then click on next here you will get the summary of the installation so just take a look if you want to make any changes you may click on back button and do that I'm good with everything I'll click on finish and there are a few more changes that you need to do so right click on the vm that you just created and click on settings in the settings go to the system and in the boot order uncheck the option which says uh, floppy select hard disk and optical and move the hard disk to the top so that uh, the pfsense will boot from the hard disk first as the hard disk will be empty it will just skip that and move on to optical drive which is the cd rom that i've attached and then proceed with installation right so once you are done with the installation and when you do the next reboot uh, it will load from the hard disk itself so it will not go beyond the hard disk because hard disk already has the pfsense installed in it as i mentioned earlier the pfsense requires you to have two interfaces right so one that connects to the internet using our local area network and the other which is the private network that is only for the virtual machines yeah so check the option which says enable network adapter a simplest way to do it is by using nat so in NAT, what would happen is the pfsense you know wan interface would use host machine ip address and go out to the internet right so basically you cannot initiate any direct connection towards the pfsense right so for that reason i'm gonna keep the adapter as bridged interface so the the benefit of bridged adapter is that it will bring the pfsense wan interface to the local area network that you are in right so because of which uh, your local area network router would assign the DHCP address to the pfsense WAN interface. Anybody on the local area network would be able to initiate communication to the WAN interface of the pfsense firewall. Start with the bridge adapter and uh, if you have any issues using the bridge adapter then you may stick with the NAT. That's what I would say. 
And you also need to make sure the name of the device is the one which you have connected to the local area network. So in this case, uh, my host machine is connected to the Wi-Fi using the wireless adapter. So if I am using uh, maybe Ethernet or wired connectivity, then I need to choose a different adapter. So I'm going to leave the default one, which is a wireless, and then I move on to the adapter two, which is the private network uh, for the VM, right? So I'm going to create one here. So I'll choose internal network. So when you choose the internal network, only the machines who are part of this network would be able to talk to each other. Okay. And if those machine wants to go out, it has to go via the PFSense firewall. Okay. Because the PFSense firewall LAN interface would act as a default gateway. All right. So I'll just name this as um, uh, maybe PFSense LAN. Yeah. That should do it and then click on OK and we are ready to install the PFSense. Double click on it, the installation would now begin. So you can see it's loading right now. So accept the license agreement and we are going to proceed with the installation. So choose the install option and then auto ZFC, that's fine. And click on install, stripe, that's fine. And use the space button to select the hard disk, okay, virtual hard disk. So select that and click on OK and click on yes. It's basically going to format that particular virtual hard disk, which is fine. So as you can see, the installation is just completed and it is asking you would like to go back to the shell and make some modification or things like that. For that, I would say just no and click on reboot. As you can see, uh, the PFSense is back online. There are two interfaces, as I said before, uh, EM0 and EM1. Uh, the EM0 represents the WAN, uh, which already got the DHCP IP from my local area network. And EM1, uh, which, uh, which has an IP address 192.168.1.1, okay? So this is uh, how the network configuration is. So if I connect any client to the private network of the PFSense, I should be able to talk to the PFSense LAN side. Cool thing about the PFSense is that you don't have to do anything out of the box. It just works. Because you already have a DHCP configured on the LAN side. You already have NAT policy for that. Your private IP would get translated to the outside interface of the PFSense. And you also have a policy that would allow the traffic from the LAN side to the WAN side. So anybody from inside wanted to go outside, it's a by default allowed. As you can see on the screen, I already have a Windows 11 uh, VM, which, which is already running on the virtual box. Let me move this guy to the uh, network that we created for the PFSense LAN side. So right click on it and click on settings and then go to the network in that choose the private network that we have created, which is PFSense LAN and then click on OK. Now go back to the Windows 11 VM. It doesn't matter what VMs that you use. Uh, in this case, I'm using Windows 11, but you could use any VMs that you would like. Yes, you can see it's connected and there is an internet access. So let me right click on it and see the properties of the network adapter. Network and sharing center and click on Ethernet. As you can see, if you scroll down, you remember I had 192.168.1.1 as a, a LAN IP and you can see I got a DHCP IP from the PFSense which ends with 100. Let me open a browser. And I do have access to the internet and the internet traffic is it's actually going via the from this host to the LAN interface, which is a default gateway. And from the PFSense, it is sending off to the internet, right? Because it has a NAT and the security policy to allow the traffic, it would just allow the traffic. And I need to do some initial configuration for the PFSense. So just go to HTTPS colon slash slash 192.168.1.1. Just ignore the security warning. And when it is prompting for you to enter the credentials, enter the username as admin and the password as pfSense, which is the default, and click on sign in. And you will have to just, you know, finish the initial setup wizard. Um, so welcome to pfSense software. You may click on next. Next. And here you can change the host name if you'd like. And you can also change the, you know, the DNS and things like that. I'm going to just leave the default. And the DHCP is fine as well. Uh, there is one more thing I'll, I'll have to change, which is uh, 
block private network entering via WAN, right? So this is applicable if you are placing the PFSense on the edge of the network, for example, directly connected to the ISP, okay, where you get the public IP addresses from the ISP. Uh, since ISP doesn't send the private IP address from the internet, uh, you can very well block this. But we are using this PFSense inside the local area network where we have only the private IP addresses, right? So it is it is not ideal to block this because if you do that, you will not be able to access the internet or anything as such. So uncheck this option and then click on next. And as I said before, uh, by default, it comes with the 192.168.1.1 IP address. And I'm gonna change that to something different, which is in uh, 10 series. So 10.1.1.1 and slash 24, and I'll click on next. And I'll also change the admin password. If you don't put anything here, it will just continue to use the PFSense uh, default password and it will keep prompting you to change it again and again. So it's better to keep it you know, changed. So I'll open CMD. I still have the old IP address and uh, the PFSense is now loading and it will not load properly because the PC itself has old IP address. Now IP address has been changed. So which this guy is not aware of. So you need to do IP release and renew on this VM. Then only it, it, it will work fine. Okay. So I'm going to do IP config forward slash release. And then renew. As you can see, I got the IP address from the DHCP, which is 10.1.1.10. And if I change the IP address URL to 10.1.1.1, I should now be able to access the PFSense uh, homepage using the new IP address. All right. And I can log in with the username and the password I have just reset. And you will get some copyright trademark notices and things like that you may click on accept thank you and you can see I have a WAN interface uh, 172 range and you have a LAN interface uh, 10.1.1.1 so I'm not gonna use the IPv6 so I'll click on the WAN interface and then in the IPv6 configuration type I'll just choose none and apply the changes so if I go back now to the PFSense homepage you won't see the IPv6 anymore. If I open google.com, you'll be able to access the internet just fine. Now just to show you how the traffic is flowing, I can just add a widget called traffic graphs in the main screen. Click on the plus icon and in that choose traffic graphs and it will show you traffic that is going in and going out from the WAN interface. Um, so that's it for this video and thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.